British troops were coming from the north, which is on the other side of the house, and the uh, Americans were all around the area. Some of them were behind trees or hiding behind barns, and uh, they would shoot at the uh, British as they came up. And um, on the other side of the house, the, a, tr a soldier came up wearing a red coat and shot through the window, and it happened that the volley killed Hannah Caldwell. They drove through on Marsh Avenue, and on June the 7th, they reached the town of Connecticut Farms, today Union. The militia had harried him all the way in, and at Connecticut Farms largely stopped him. It was uh, a matter of complete frustration to Niphausen, and the British and Hessian troops were with him, and they took it out on the village itself. Virtually the entire town of Connecticut Farms was burned. It was during this time that uh, Mrs. Caldwell, the wife of James Caldwell, one of the more rabid Presbyterian clergy who supported the war for independence, was killed in her home under circumstances that are not fully clear. In this area, the British were known to come right across from Staten Island through Elizabeth, and they were known to come to this area quite often. And Hannah had nine children, and she had been through this so many times, and she just felt, as a woman and a non-combatant, that she wouldn't have any problems, that nobody would dare hurt her or her children. So the story continues at Liberty Hall. The British troops were marching down Morris Avenue, the pouring rain, they were all disheveled, they were in retreat, and some of the soldiers broke off and decided to raid the rebel governor's house. And we're not quite sure if they broke in the front door or the back door, but we know that Mrs. Livingston and her daughters decided to go upstairs for safety. So they, they fled up the staircase. The ladies fled to the second floor of the house. They heard the soldiers ransacking the lower level. And then suddenly they heard footsteps on the staircase coming up the stairs. And as the soldiers got to the top of the stairs, uh, Kitty Livingston decided to take a stand. She st stepped out of the cupboard. And just as she stepped out, lightning illuminated her from the storm. And one of the soldiers yelled, my God, it's the ghost of Mrs. Caldwell, who we murdered today. And they fled from the house. And when the ladies got downstairs, they found that the soldiers had piled furniture and all the debris in the front room. And they actually wanted to burn the house down with the ladies trapped upstairs. Her home was in the area of the church. The church itself was burned as uh, part of the, uh, the, the British and Hessian frustration. The Union County seal is the only seal of which I am aware anywhere in the country, or for that matter, anywhere in the world, that has someone getting shot to death as the official municipal seal. Mrs. Caldwell, who was out in front uh, in the open, uh, being killed, her arms are up in the air as she's being shot in cold blood by a red-coated soldier. It was a tragedy for the family, of course, but it was an enormous propaganda victory for the Patriot cause, which immediately painted all of this as a deliberate attempt to kill a family member, a defenseless woman amidst her children, uh, simply because she was connected with a rebel parson. Word spread of her death. It wasn't just an accident. They believed it was murder, and the propaganda infuriated people. At that time, uh, Washington was having a hard time getting troops. But when they heard that they killed the parson's wife, a non-combatant, people came from all around New Jersey to go to Springfield. And that was a, a major thing because when the Battle of Springfield occurred, it really helped. And we were able to get that push and to drive the British finally out of New Jersey. It just shows that history is not only the main people like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, but it's also the local people. We were, they were all involved in the history and the founding of our great nation.